Hello everyone, I am Nutrix, and today we're talking about Velvet Machine. It's not a reverb. It's, it is, but it's not. What I mean by that, it's that Velvet Machine is a plugin, an audio unit plugin for iOS, iPad. It's using convolution. So by default, people go, oh, it's a reverb. It can do reverb, but that's not really why this would be interesting. I can do you know, good reverbs, but that's not the case of why this is different. The Velvet Machine is basically, basically using a granular source to do convolution, and it's a granular noise generator that is called a Velvet Noise Generator. Uh, I'm just simplifying the whole thing now, but it's basically is a generator of noise that can be very uh, dense in the amount of impulses that you can have, or very limited and, and empty in the amount of impulses. So as you bring more impulses, like 2,000 impulses per second, it becomes really dense and it, you have a very rich reverb. And when you go down to one or two or three or 10 different impulses per second, it becomes close to a delay or echo, but it still have that grain sound in it. So it's granular noises, convolution in a package. So it's a bit bizarre. It's fun because I like bizarre stuff. And what you have is you have a flexible envelope that gives you control over how that noise evolve through time. And that's how you can have reverb because you can have like Shh. And just for those who don't know what convolution is, to very simply explain it, convolution is basically using the impulse response of a sound. So you would go, the tra traditional convolution would be you would go out on a cathedral and you record an impact, you know, like or whatever big sound you have, like a very short pow. You record the pow, the sound, the original sound, and the, the response of the room. That response, you can actually take that and use it in a convolution reverb and say, well, I'm going to play my snare and my snare will be matched with that impulse response. So it will convolute the two together and it will sound like if your snare would play in that room. So really interesting to recreate these cathedral sounds or uh, specific studio sound or or echo chamber and stuff like that has been used for that, but it can also be used to recreate the room tone in post-production. It can be used also to recreate an amplifier specific or amp ed specific tone or compressor specific color because it basically is the impulse response. So it doesn't have to be just reverb. Uh, in this case, you're, we're using a noise generator as the impulse response to whatever you're sending into it. So let's actually try it. You'll see it's, it's actually pretty funky. It's fun. If I press play. So I only have it on my clap. Okay. That's the only sound that has it. Let's go back to this one. Okay. Let's actually go back to the plugin itself. If we go back, anytime you're not sure how it works, you can go click on Velvet Machine and you've got the user guide. You click on user guide and voila, you have access to the whole thing and you explain the whole thing. But the graphic is very simple to use. You've got on one side, basically, the envelope of the noise itself. And then the other side, you've got the timing. You can have in, in, in musical value how long it's basically going to be. The pre-delay, so you can have a delay before it starts, like a reverb, basically. You have the width, left and right, can be very mono or very wide. The density is how many impulse per second, that's the IPS. Very dense. And now keep in mind that this can be very demanding on, if you have an older iPad, it could be difficult. Bring it down. You see, you hear that? Now you only have six IP impulse per second. That's why I'm saying it becomes, without anything else, just by changing the amount of impulses, you hear now it becomes more like a weird granular echo. You have low cut for the low frequencies and the high cut to quit, cut the high frequencies and you get the mix 
only the mix, only the sound, because you should read the manual. So let's go back to the envelope. That's where mixing the envelope and the density becomes really, really fun. So let's say I've got this little, if I, if I want to have a natural or traditional reverb, just like, like you have the tail coming out, I can have a couple of, you know, interesting shape if I want to, and I can just like change easily, rapidly. If I want longer, again, longer tail works. But look at this, this is where it becomes interesting. Double tap on it, put it here. Double tap, put it here. Double tap. This is just fun. And you can create these weird shaped reverb. And then that's where it starts to be interesting because I wish I had a grid here so I can turn on the grid that visually shows me time and musical values if it's synced to time, that'd be interesting. But still, the time knob has a value here for musical values, so that's where it becomes interesting, because you hear that it's on time. So now if I bring back everything else. The reverb, it's not a reverb, but the impulse response becomes musically interesting. is where the Velvet Machine is different than anything else I saw up to now. It's this, and then when again, when you play back to the density again, it's just a weird... You hear the movement, and again, you can play with the width. So, it's that mix of density, control of, on the envelope, that makes it totally different than anything else I saw. a part of the, this is part of what I call the creative um, reverb and creative plugins. It's not a synthesizer, it's not a drum machine, but this will be part of the creative process because what I'm doing right now, it's part of the rhythm information that will stay in the rhythm song and it's not like a, a reverb to add space, no, it's a reverb to create rhythm. It's not a reverb, it's the Velvet Machine. <laughs> That's it. Hope this is helpful. See you soon. Stay safe. Make my music. Cheers.